and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the Battery Insiders podcast. Here live from India, not too far from New Delhi, and we're here at the India Battery Show. And I'm really delighted to have the Mr. Debmalia Sen with us, who is the India lead at the World Economic Forum. And we know each other for quite some time, or three years now, and in different capacities. And it's such a delight to be able to be here in person with you. And we just shared a stage together, yeah. um, which I think where you shared some really interesting insights about the India market, the perspective about India um, for battery. So wonderful to have you. Thank you, thank you, and so beautiful to have this. And uh, first of all, welcome to India. And uh, yeah, I think the way it has all been shaping up for this sector, it's just very promising. So happy to do this. Absolutely, and yeah. Again, I know you have many slides, and I can recommend follow this person on LinkedIn. You can find more more insights there. But I think I would just like to start, like where are we right now? Because I think a lot of our listeners, and me included, right before coming here, you have some idea about India, but I think there is so much more happening than a lot of us and have maybe are aware of. So maybe if you could just set a bit of the scene. Where are we right now in India related to batteries? Thank you. So you know, uh, where are we right now? We are nowhere. Okay, if you look into the installed capacity today, it's around 0.2 gigawatt hours. That's nothing. In a grid which is, as of today, more than 400 gigawatts, right? Uh, 0.2 gigawatt hour is nothing. And when you actually look into how China, Australia, US are doing it. But said that, you know, India has been striding really fast in this area. Why do I say this? Uh, first, of course, India has its target to achieve 500 gigawatts from non-fossil fuel energy by 2030. And in order to do that, in order to sustainably get that into grid, India estimates that India will require around uh, 42 gigawatts of energy storage, battery storage, by 2030 for five hours duration. That's 208 gigawatt hours, right? Along with around 19 gigawatts of pumped hydro will be required. Now, so I'm saying from 0.2 gigawatt hours, the ask is to go to 200, uh, uh, so more than 200 gigawatt hours by 2030. It's a huge ask. Six years, right? Six now. years, yeah. exactly, six years. Now, so therefore, what has happened is uh, India has started late, but India has quickly picked up pace also. A lot of policy and regulatory developments has happened over time. Uh, Right, right from bringing in mandates like energy storage obligations to giving various waivers from ISTS waivers, interstate transmission system waivers, to also getting in a system of viability gap funding for stationary energy st uh, battery storage systems so that the cost can be brought down and accelerated deployment can happen. So all these things has happened along with of course supply side where we have been promoting domestic manufacturing along with f production linked incentive schemes. But that said, over the last two years, the tendering scene has actually picked up big time. Last year, uh, there, it was a record year where we had 25 uh, energy storage linked tenders. Today, as we sit here, we are already at 23. So we are already at par and we will look, this will become the best year yet for storage in India. Now, if I talk, talk di directly about batteries, today we have around 16 gigawatt hours of tenders which has been issued, out of which 13 just got issued in 2024 and we are still three months to go. You don't know where this number will go. And the best part of this is, of course, uh, costs have reduced globally and that has impacted a lower LCOS in India. But more than that, what we have been seeing is the turnaround time the tender from the tender getting issued to that getting awarded to finally construction starting. That timeline has reduced significantly in 2024, which is a very positive sign for batteries in India. So yes, we started late, but we have very quickly picked up pace. And as I say, today around 16 gigs has been issued out of which 8 gigawatt hours is online. That means it's an open opportunity for everyone. And this is just standalone, right? And apart from that, we also have RD plus storage tenders, which again brings in a very big opportunity in this market. And that's like on the stationary side, right? And also from an e-mobility standpoint, right. like what's, what's happening there maybe as well? Correct. So, you know, India is one of the leading markets if you look into the two-wheeler and three-wheeler industry across the globe. And the penetration that has been happening in that sector is really noteworthy. Initially, a lot of subsidies came from the government 
now we see in certain aspects we have already reached price parity with an ICE, right? So that I think India has done relatively well in the two-wheeler, three-wheeler segment. Passenger vehicles has not been that much uh, uh, till now, but yes, we do see a bit of uh, traction coming in. Also, public transport, buses, is one area where also we have seen. And there, again, a lot of uh, support from government came in form of fame policies, one, two, uh, where they actually incentivized uh, you know, uh, promoting these kind of electric vehicles. So yes, electric vehicle has been strong, but I think over the last one year, and that has been the sentiment globally, uh, the stationary storage market has taken the limelight. Yeah, which I think is very unique also, especially about this as a market, right? Very different to other other regions like Europe, etc., where automotive has really seen as the big pull, even though now there has been a bit of a slowdown and we have seen also best over exceeding that maybe one, some people have been thinking. I think here maybe one interesting insight I found today in one of the CEO roundtables here was, and a CTO roundtable was, the topic of um, infrastructure mm. and some of the limitations there, charging infrastructure, again, a big topic in many different markets, but also being something where I think there might be more new incentive programs coming, yeah. which will also address these or at least help starting addressing. Yes, yes. So very recently, the government came out with guidelines for charging infrastructure, uh, which was missing. Uh, so that is in place. Government has also been kind of promoting both. One charging, the other one is the swapping model. Both has been uh, kind of in discussion. They don't only want to go one way. So yeah, the charging part has been uh, one of the critical bottlenecks. And I think as of today, there has been a target which the government came out that within a radius, you need to have chargers in every urban setup as well as rural setups. But uh, as of today, the scene is slowly improving, not very fast, but yes, slowly. Yeah. And one other aspect, I think, which was quite interesting, you brought up also in the panel, was the topic of value stacking. Yes. And the limitations right now, how you can use BES in India. So maybe you could share a bit more about, the, about that for our listeners. So, you know, uh, globally, if you look how batteries have grown uh, in terms of revenue streams, you will find that they start off with power kind of applications, frequency regulation, ancillary service. Once that market saturates, then you go over to energy kind of applications. In India, we have kind of taken a leapfrog directly to energy kind of applications. Why? It's also because the ancillary market in India is not that developed, or rather it's not that conducive for batteries to be participating in that market. So therefore, we see in India directly going to energy kind of application, and that also primarily for peak, peak management. Okay, of the all tenders that has been issued till date, 74% addresses peak management. Okay, around 15% is D DG offset and the rest is others. So you see, it has been primarily a single use case that these tenders had been has been addressing. That you manage my peak, okay, or you adhere and give me you know kind of a peak guarantee for four hours or two hours in these kind of tenders. So. While that is good and prices has reduced, not because of any other but because of the global uh, uh, oversupply situation that we are seeing. But India has been predominantly, as I am saying, that it has been a predominantly one use case. But that is where I think a lot of uh, opportunity lies that if we can better multi stack revenue streams from these assets, the cost and the returns can be much more. Yeah, I think that's, that sounds really good. And maybe, yeah, that's a, I think we're kind of touching on these points already, but like if you would now look at India, right, and, and I think you have seen all of these developments, like what is maybe one thing other regions can learn from India? Yeah. And maybe what's one thing where you think, you know, that's something where India needs to improve yeah. and to, to really be successful on this? Thank you. I think one thing that we can really share with the world is the tendering process, the approval process. If you look into US, uh, the interconnection queue is 18 months, 24 months at some times. We have done a tremendous job there. The approval process, the, the entire system of a tender getting conceptualized that to getting awarded has been quite a learning in India. And I think in, in, as part of World Economic Forum, in many of these for, uh, in sessions, we do share this with our US counterparts and others that this is what India is doing beautifully. So yes, that is one thing that we definitely can share with the world. And something that we can learn from the world is, I think, uh, you know, two things. One, of course, is uh, from the aspect of research and development. 
which I feel there is a lot of potential here, but we are not utilizing that to its fullest. So that is one part, and especially China, I guess, the way they have done it, you know. And China is China because of the amount that they have just invested in that, right? So I think that we, sh we need to learn. And the second part is building that talent pool. Yeah, we have a lot of talent, a lot of opportunities coming up, but when these opportunities do come up, will we have enough trained manpower to address that opportunity? I couldn't agree more. As you know, you know, it's something we're really focused on also as Battery Associates with the Battery MBA program and a lot of other trainings we're developing and we're supplying to our, our partners. And I think, again, empowering people is so important. Also one of the reasons why I really want, didn't want to miss this event to also meet with the local talent and really, really support that as well. Um, but yeah, Deb, I just want to really thank you for these insights for today. Absolute delight. I'm sure we're going to see each other hopefully soon again. And yeah, also this was Simon Enke with Battery Associates. And yeah, you listen to the Battery Insiders podcast. And if you want to hear more about these or watch more of these, please subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or YouTube or anywhere else where you watch or listen to your podcast. With this, thanks so much, Deb. Thank you.